Okay, welcome back, guys. So this video is talking about the intro to our related rates chapter. So related rates problems are really fun and some of my favorites in calculus. And what's happening here is you have problems where there are multiple variables um, that are changing with respect to time. So I tried to poorly illustrate this picture here. If you have, uh, for instance, a sphere. Suppose this is like a spherical red balloon being blown up. We have a lot of things that are changing, right? The volume is changing with respect to time. The radius is changing with respect to time. The area is changing. The surface area is changing with respect to time. So there are a lot of things uh, which are changing as you kind of look at one point in time. And, and as you would expect, those derivatives are related to each other, and we're going to explore how. So first off, Let's start with just some examples without a context, just, just general math problems. And what we're going to be doing kind of is our key technique throughout this is implicit differentiation, which you may remember from not too long ago. Okay, so let's go ahead and give a few examples. So suppose we have x squared plus y squared equals 10, and I tell you that dy dt equals negative 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to find, this is a 10, sorry, I'm going to ask you to find dx dt at the point negative 3 comma 1. Okay, so what you're going to do with a problem like this is you're going to start with this x squared plus y squared equals 10, and you're going to take the time derivative, take the time derivative of both sides. So you're doing implicit differentiation, but not with respect to x, you're doing it with respect to t. So you're going to need, uh, t is our variable, so t is the variable, so you're going to need a dx dt and a dy dt and whatever for every other variable you have. So when you take the derivative of x squared, you're going to have 2x times the derivative of x with respect to t, plus derivative of y squared is 2y times derivative of y with respect to t, and of course the derivative of 10 is 0. Okay, now as usual, once you've taken the time derivatives of both sides, now we're going to plug in and solve. So we have negative 3 comma 1, so we know that's our x, and that's our y, and this is my dy dt. So let's plug that in. So we have negative 6 times dx dt, uh, and then y is 2, so plus 2 times negative 2 equals 0. Now we have a pretty easy problem to solve, right? So negative 6 dx dt equals 4, so my dx dt in this case will be uh, negative 2 thirds. Okay, so that's how you approach this problem. We started with this equation when we had to find a dx dt or a dy dt. I take the derivative of the whole equation with respect to t. So t is our variable, it's called with respect to t, and that just required us to put a dx dt and a dy dt when we took those derivatives. Okay, let's do a couple more, and we're going to see some more kinks in these as we go. So now let's suppose we have v cubed plus x squared equals 15, and I tell you that dv dt equals negative 5, and I ask you to find dx dt when x is 4. Okay. So again, we need to find dx dt, so we're going to take the time derivative of both sides. So the derivative of v cubed becomes 3v squared times a dv dt, plus derivative of x squared is 2x dx dt equals 15. Uh, sorry, derivative of 15, 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in it. So what do we know? We know x is 4. So that's a 2 times a 4 times a dx dt we're trying to find. Uh, we don't know v. Ooh, that's kind of a little bit of an issue. So this is something that's going to come up. We don't know v. But I can find v by plugging into the original equation. So I can plug in that x equals 4, because we know this is happening when x equals 4, to the original. So if I go ahead and do that, I'll plug in 4. So I'll get v cubed plus 16 equals 15. So that gives me v cubed equals negative 1. The cube root of negative 1 is still negative 1. Great. So now when we do that, we have 3 times 1 times dv dt, uh, which again we know is negative 5. So that's like negative 15 plus 8 dx dt equals 0. So that means that my dx dt is equal to 15 eighths. Okay. So the tricky part here, right, the new thing that we had to do was figure out a missing piece of information 
by looking at the original equation, going back to this to see our relationship between those two variables. Okay, now let's look at one where we have a third variable here. So we have three variables. So let's say I tell you here that z is equal to 3xy, and I'm going to ask you to find dz dt when let's say x equals 2, y equals 4, dx dt is negative 7, and my dy dt is 5. Okay, so we have all three of these variables changing with respect to time. So we're going to start by taking a derivative of both sides. So the dz dt is on the left side. Now, when I have to do the derivative of 3xy, I'm going to have to do the product rule because I see two variables here which are multiplied together. So I'm going to have x times the derivative of y plus y times the derivative of x. Okay, and now let's just go for the old plug -arama, right? So we're just going to have 3 times uh, x is 2, my dy dt is 5, my y is 4, my dx dt is negative 7. So my dz dt is going to be 3 times 10 minus 28, which is 3 times negative 18. Ah, oh, geez, that should be negative 54. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Um, let's go ahead and do some, some real-world problems. I have one or two I want to look at. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll just put those in the next video. All right, I'll see you guys there.